we'll do the entire screen. There's my face. Okay. All right. So today we're going to talk a little bit about how to use our strategy that we learned yesterday. So our strategy, remember, is called SQ Triple R or so I want you to remind a neighbor, what does survey mean? What, what am I asking you to do when I tell you to survey the text? Read it pretty much. Take a quick look. What do you notice? What jumps out at you, right? Is there a picture? Is there highlighted words? What text feature do you see? Okay, how about questions? What is that? Okay, yeah, question, yeah. question the text. Based on what you saw when you did your survey, what are you wondering? Are you wondering something about the picture? Usually it's focused around text features, right? Okay, then we finally get to read, right? After we read, we then rehearse. We tell a friend or we write down some things that we notice in note form right and then finally you retell what is the most important pieces got that so what i've done today instead of going into pathblazer like essentially we're going to kind of go through it on our flip chart <laughs> i've copied the next lesson so the next lesson is titled In Pathways or Social Studies, The Influence of Egyptian Trade. How many of you have done that lesson already? Any of you? Talk about what Maybe you took a look at it is, so far? Is it, called, is it called Trade Routes? No, that one's further down. We haven't got there yet. Oh. We'll get to Trade Routes though. Sorry, already passed that thing. Ah, good, then this should be a review for you. All right, so it starts with Clothing and communication. So remember, we are working on note taking. Who remembers what I expect your notes to look like? Your brain. Micah. My brain. Your brain on paper, right? So does it have to be perfectly arranged? No. It it just has to be written in a way that you understand what you're saying, right? So I want you to turn to the next page in your notebook. You're gonna start with today's date. Today is 10-7-20. So October 7th, 2020. And then the only thing I expect to see is the date and the Title so that you can keep organized whatever else you get on that paper. You need to know that it's about this article, right? What's the article called? Well, let's look. Clothing and communication. Okay. So if you could write clothing and communication, this right here would be your title, right? And today is 10-7. That's your date. Got that? All right, once you have that on your paper, I want you to survey this text. What do you notice? Do you notice? Call it out. What do you think? see a cross and then a uniform writing. Okay. What else do you see? Highlighted words in blue. Highlighted words in blue. Okay. Yeah, no, green water. That's a cross. Can I turn off the light so we can see it a little better? Yeah. Okay. The cross? Better? Yeah. Yay, now we can see. Good. So I see a green word. Okay. So if we go back to our strategy, we just surveyed the text. So I'm going to check that off. Your job now is to question. So tell a neighbor what is something you're wondering based on your survey. 
What do you think? I'm wondering, like, if that writing actually says something. What do you think? Yeah. I'm wondering what that meant. I want to decode that message. <laughs> but it doesn't tell me. Do you notice that it doesn't tell me what language it's written in? And it doesn't quite look like cuneiform. It looks like yeah. something similar. I think it's from Why does it look like a uh, wing game? I don't know. Just a little, but Why is it not it's not. Not. I, who does? I see like an upside down seven. Do you see that? Yes. Oh, yeah. Very interesting. Okay, so do we have any brave volunteers? Because after we have survey, now we have question. It's time to read. Who wants to be my reader today? I don't. I think Micah has read for us before. So, because we're recording, you get the microphone. Yay. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. I forgot that the blue words in Pathways are, if you click on it, it reads them to you. So, Micah, since you're a reader today, do you have a question about how to say any of the blue highlighted words? I'm not sure. Do you want me to just read them to you so you know how to say them? Sure. Okay, so this first one right here, this word says Phoenicians. Okay, say that with me. Phoenicians. Okay, this second blue highlight says archaeological excavations. Oh, that's a mouthful. Tongue just ready. Let's chunk it out. Archae. Archaeological, archaeological excavations, excavations, excavations. Yay! Good job. Okay, the very last one down here says hieroglyphics. Hieroglyphics. Okay, so we have survey, we have question, we have read the blue words, so we know how to read them now, Micah. Is going to read us the text. As famous sea traders, the Phoenicians met many people from different cultures. The Egyptians soon became the most influential of these business partners. They traded more than textiles and jewels with the Phoenicians. They traded their culture as well. Archaeological, Archaeological excavations reveal a strong relationship between the Egyptians and the Phoenicians especially in dress and writing. Ancient sculptures reveal a rich textile business and wealth of jewels. The famous Phoenician alphabet also mirrored the Egyptian hieroglyphic writing system, which was transported to other cultures around the Mediterranean Sea. Excellent. Okay, so if we go back to our strategy. Oh, wrong way. We have surveyed, we have questions, we have read. Now it's time to rehearse. Tell a neighbor, what is something you got out of that passage? What did you get out of that? So what? What do you think? All right, let's hear it. What do you think is most important? What'd you get out of that? What did you rehearse with a friend? Because now that we're done rehearsing, it's time to retell. Re so I'm going to do this actually on my notes. Okay, so here's my notes, just like you have your notes. Remember, what was it called? Clothing and communication? Yes. Clothing and communication. Remember, my notes are like my brain on paper. So Yours do not have to look like mine, and chances are they won't, and that's okay. How come uh, the age, how come it looks like one zero 
I don't know, because I'm a sloppy handwriter. Okay, so what did you get when you were rehearsing? What was important from that piece? I'll go back to it so you can look. Oh, there we go. What do you get, Donnie? Egyptian writing is bluish. Ooh, nice. So Egyptian writing was influenced by Phoenician writing. The other way around. Egyptian oh. influenced the Phoenician writing. Did I get it backwards? Yeah. Oh. So you said. This one right here? Is that what you're talking about? The Egyptians became the most influential business partners? No. There's a strong, it does say there was a strong relationship between the Egyptians and the Phoenicians in dress and writing. Is that what you were thinking? Or then down here you said, the famous Venetian alphabet also mirrored the Egyptian hieroglyphics writing system. Yeah. So, it, does it look like the Venetian alphabet influenced the Egyptian one, or the Egyptian one influenced the Venetian one? The Egyptian one influenced the Venetian one. Okay. Egyptian writing. Influence. Come on, turn off. Okay, good. What else? What else did you get? What else was important in that text? Olivia, what do you think? Um, well, I wrote down in the textiles and we traded them. Yes, they made textiles and jewels and traded their culture as well. Good. What else did you get? Anything else? What about this piece at the beginning that talks about how, uh, remember, they're famous sea traders, right? And that the Egyptians became the most influential business partners? So since most of our notes have been focused on the Egyptians and the Phoenicians, right? Yeah. Maybe we should say that they were business partners? Yeah. I think I'm going to write that. I don't know. Okay. All right. Let's see what we have got here. We survey. We question. We retold. Now it's time to repeat the same process with the next one. All right? Yes. So the next one is called what? Fashion news. Fashion news. So in my notes, I'm going to make myself a new page. Oh, let's not write in yellow, shall we? Okay. And what is the first step in our strategy with our S? Survey. Survey the text. What do you uh, see? I see a bird. I see ancient things in the 
Okay, so we're looking at the picture. There is a green word, but there's no blue word. Anybody notice that? Yep. Okay, so we must know how to say all these by now, apparently. Okay. What is, after we're done surveying, what do we do? What's our cue? Question. Question. So tell the neighbor, what are some things you're wondering based on what you noticed? Why are they talking about smart charts? Have you heard it before? Yes. What do you think? What's your question? No question? I'm wondering where are all the blue words? That's what I want to know. Where'd they go? There's no new words here? Really? Okay, after we question, our first R stands for? No? Read. 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 Who's going to be our brave reader this time? EJ. Here's your microphone, my friend. No, you can do it. Uh, fashion news. What did people wear, wear in the ancient world of Phoenicians? Did they have fashion shows and runaway models? Did rich people dress differently? The answer is that we're not really sure, even though sculptures show both Egyptian and Phoenician citizens in what might be considered traditional dress. They usually portray important people in what must have been expensive clothing? When you evaluate yep. the fashion of Phoenicia, yep. consider three facts. First, the sculpture shows the wealthy of society and even gods and goddesses. They sculpt these sculptures may not not may not reflect the everyday dress of common people. Second, the Phoenicians' main business was trading in the textiles and satisfying the taste of trading partners. Customers have determined what the Phoenicians made. As a result, many of Phoenician clothes, hairstyles, and jewelry were really Egyptian. Third, early Phoenicia had strictly uh, I can't do that. Distinctly, Distinctly Asian. Asian and Egyptian influences. Light Phoenicia reflected the Greek and remote Roman trends. Excellent. Okay. Read purse with a friend. What did you find or think was important out of that? What do you think? Now we read, so what? No? You don't think so? All they do is put a picture of like what their clothes look like. Okay, so Jaden's wondering if there's anything new here. What do you guys think? Donnie, what do you think? I think what's new is Greek and Roman styles of clothing. Ah, so, yeah. So it talks about how, like, the sculptures kind of show what their fashion looked like, right? Mm -hmm. And that the people of Phoenicia were very much influenced by the Egyptian culture, the Greek culture, and the Roman culture at various points, right? And so they really kind of started dressing the same way as the Egyptians and then some Asian influence, it, it said, and Greek and Romans did. Okay, so... How do you think I could capture that on my notes? Let me see what's going to work for my brain today. I think I'm going to go with um, sculptures. 
Gold pictures. Man, it's a mess. Show trends. And then the trends had like multiple. They had Egyptians. Romans. Yeah, Romans. They said that was later, right? Greeks. And they said Asian, right? Oh, man. I can't spell today. There we go. Okay. Anything else? Did you get out of that? No. It talked a little bit about how, like, they weren't sure if people who were rich dressed differently than people who were poor. Did you notice that? Do you think they all dress the same? No. So I'm just going to put rich versus poor with a question mark because I feel like that's something they might talk a little bit more about as I keep reading about this topic. Okay. Let's see what our next topic is. We did. We got that one. We got that one. We got that one. We got that one. We got our notes. Okay. Time to start again with page number three. What's our title? Loincloths and tunics. Woo! We're getting into the fun stuff here. Okay. Loin cloths and tunics. Okay. What's our first step? What do we do first? Uh, Our S? Survey. Survey. Tell a friend. What jumps out at you when you look at that text? Okay, what do you see? What jumps out? I know they, I noticed that they separated the men and women's clothing. Oh, there it's separated into two sections, men versus women. Good. See that? Okay. There's a text box. And what's inside the text box? It looks like I see a bunch of question marks. Yeah. Right? So they're asking us some questions. Yeah. Do we and we looked at the picture too, right? Yeah. What is what do you think that's a picture of? I think it, to me it looks like a girl Yeah, it looks like it might be I can see what they mean about it being influenced by Egyptians, right? Because those look like Egyptian, like, pictures to me, right? Okay, what's our next step? After S comes Q, question. What are you wondering? How friend. How important? I'm wondering why they separated the men and women's clothing. Because this isn't a mall. What do you think? Why are they separating men versus women? Okay. Why are they asking me so many questions in the text box is what I'm wondering. Because they are Donnie, what are you wondering? I'm wondering why do we think they're asking questions? Oh. So maybe those aren't questions for us. Maybe those are questions that the author's wondering. Good. Okay, after we question, what do we do? We read. Who wants to be our brave reader this time? Jocelyn. Or not Jocelyn. Olivia. I don't know why I just called you Jocelyn. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, here you go, my dear. Here's your microphone. Oh, there you go. Um, artifacts and sculptures show that men wore, wore anything from heavy skirts to white cloths. Or, uh, one sculpture shows two men wearing belted plated skirts ornament, ornamented with clasps shaped like cobras. The men also wore large necklaces with images of the gods. Other sculptures 
show more common clothing. Men, men are shown wearing one class and tight fitting tunics um, that reach their ankles. Most men seem to choose long hair and beards, and some wearing brightly colored embroidered hats. Women artifacts show Phoenician women in long tunics, belts, and tassels. Hair was styled with elaborate braiding and loops. They wore a lot of jewelry, including finger rings, bracelets, earrings, necklaces, and headpieces. Uh, okay. I think the men's the one point in that picture. Rehearse. So what? What'd you get out of it? The boys I do be know. Like pretty, pretty the man's is the left one and the woman's the right. It says in that picture both of them are boys. Yes. I know one of you okay, there. you seem to have stopped talking. Okay, so now it's time to retell. What is important enough that you think we should include it in our notes? Who had hats? Men have hats? Ooh, brightly embroidered hats. Okay. I think I'm gonna go like this. Men, women. So we had bright embroidered hats. Okay, what else? Donnie? Heavy skirts. Heavy skirts. Who had that? Men? Yes. Okay. What else? The women had a lot of, they wore a lot of jewelry. Ooh, lots of jewelry. Did was it only the women, or did both men and women wear lots of jewelry? <laughs> so you see large necklaces, images of the gods, and then this one was lots of jewelry, including finger rings, bracelets, earrings, necklaces, and headpieces. Holy camoly. So men still wore some jewelry, but not quite as fancy stuff. So large necklaces. And then they liked rings. Seems like of all kinds. Right? Bracelets. Yeah, that's the so ear, finger, right? Whoa, what happened there? Okay. Ooh, and head pieces. What is going on here? Ah, lot, man, Olivia got a lot of stuff out of that. Long hair and beards. Hey, that sounds kind of like hipsters today, right? Long hair and beards, that seems to be a trend these days. Large necklaces and yeah? And skirts? Oh, heavy yeah, skirts? Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, let's make sure we're not missing anything. So it says, um, what, do you think we need to say anything about tunics or loincloths? I mean, that is the topic, uh, like the title of this page. So maybe we should say something about that. What was a loincloth? A short skirt, right? And what is a tunic? Okay. I'm guessing because they titled it that, but it's pretty important. We're going to write that down. Loin cloth is a short skirt. Tunic was a long, oh man, my handwriting is so terrible today. Pullover shirt. Okay, anything else? No, you got it? Okay, let's go check our stuff off that we've got done here. We surveyed, we questioned, we read, we rehearsed, we retold. All right, we have one more 
to do. Okay, one more to do. Let's take a look here and see what our next title is, shall we? More of a good thing. Hmm. Okay. Last one. More of a good thing. All right, what's our first step? What do we do first? Survey. Survey the text. So, what do you notice? What's jumping out at you now? More writing? Green text box? Okay. All right, so we're seeing a green text box and more writing, okay? All right, after we survey, what do we do? Question. Question. Okay, what are you wondering based on your survey? What do you have questions about? What do you think? What is that writing? What's with the writing? Well, what I said is that I wonder if we write in Greek or Latin because the A's look like R-A-G. Oh. Yeah. Do we write like the Greeks or do we write like the Latins? I think, I think um, that's a good question. It's almost the same. But it is the same. It's it does look very similar, huh? And then look at the Phoenician one. It's kind of on the side, right? Yeah. It's kind of like it just, they just tipped it over. I don't think that's an A, though. I don't think it's A. Well, that's what it says it is. I th I'm wondering, is it is are all of these the same letter? Like, is this all letter A? Yeah, it is. I don't know. All right, we surveyed. We questioned. What is step three? Read. 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 Who wants to be my brave reader? Yay, Miss Donnie. Here is your microphone, my dear. Freshly sanitized. More of a good thing. The Egyptians developed, 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 developed a style of writing called hieroglyphics. The complex use system used pictures to represent sounds, phrases, and everyday things like birds, human figures, and drinking vessels. The system worked well for the Egyptians, but it was the community consuming. consuming the draw, and there were thousands of pictures to memorize. The phoenix improved on the Egyptian system, lifting only a few sound signs of the Egyptian, the phoenix invented much simpler signs, including circles, crosses, and starting lines. The phoenix scene of writing looked much more like modern letters. It could, um, it could easily be scrambled, scribbled, scribbled down by a bookkeepers and transcribers. Transcribers. Good job. You want to read the green box too? Sure. Go for it. The ancients of the of our our, our writing system. The Phoenix alphabet is considered the ancestor ancestor of writing system we use. As your guide to how you visit the development evolution evolution of the alphabet website to the animation show how our letters came from the Phoenix alphabet. Ooh, okay. So we surveyed, we questioned, we read, thank you, Donnie. And now you need to Rehearse. Tell a friend. So what? What'd you get out of that? 
That's okay. They can be on. What do you get? I don't know. All right. Time to retell. Last but not least. What do you think is important enough from this text to include in our notes? Real quick, was anyone's jacket? Anybody missing a jacket? Take a look. It looks kind of like Alex's. Let me look closer at it. Tell the neighbor, what's important enough to include in your notes? Alex is wearing a jacket. 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 Hmm. This one is tricky because there's a lot of information, huh? So here's a couple things I noticed. So they it starts by talking about hieroglyphics, right? And it says hieroglyphics use pictures to represent sounds, phrases, and everyday things. Okay? And it worked well for the Egyptians. But here's the kicker. It was time consuming. And there were thousands of pictures to memorize. That seems like a lot of work, right? So essentially, the Phoenicians, they decided, well, we need to improve on the system, right? And so they took some of what the Egyptians did and then they invented much simpler signs, right? Circles, crosses, and slanting lines. What is our alphabet made out of these days? Look at our letter A, what is it made out of? Uh, two, three lines. Two slanting lines and a third that the adjoins them in the middle, right? Okay, so if we look at a lowercase a. It's a circle with a tail, right? Uh -huh. So if, if it weren't for the Phoenicians inventing circles, crosses, and slanting lines, would you like to memorize thousands of pictures? No. That seems a little, a little more difficult to me. <laughs> Maybe that's just my opinion. But Maybe. So then at the end it says the Phoenician system of writing looked much more like modern letters. It could be easily scribbled down by bookkeepers and transcribers. So instead of like they had in Mesopotamia, where you had to go to school for 12 years to be a scribe, now anybody could figure it out. Because it's simpler, right? Then in our text box here, we have that this is the ancestor of our writing. Right? So, that's a lot of information. Your job is to put the most important parts the way it looks like in your brain on your paper. Okay? I'm going to get it on my paper. There we go. I am so grateful for the Phoenicians because I would not want to have to go to school for 12 years just to <laughs> memorize thousands of pictures. Well, I would just give up and not describe. <laughs> Hey, 
That's my brain on paper for you today. Okay. So, your job is to bring your notes with you when you go to the computer lab because today I want you to do this one if you've yet to do it. Because the last page in this lesson is this what do you remember box, okay? And you should be able to answer all of these questions correctly now based on the notes you wrote. Okay, you got that? We're not gonna actually answer them right now because I want you to do it when we go to the computer lab. Capiche? Mm -hmm. Fabulous. All right, let me turn off our video. Hello, Logan. Hello, Logan. I'm so glad to see you join us for our reading lesson today. I hope you found it helpful. And just so you 